Hello and welcome to the Friday, September 1st, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today, Jan looks at why do we see so many of these simple phishing attacks. And well, the quick answer here, it's just really easy to pull them off and cheap in doing so. So an attacker doesn't really need a huge success rate in order to make these attacks work. The sample here was a simple HTML page. It does, of course, use some obfuscation. And the victim is tricked into opening the HTML page, thinking it's an audio file and it's displaying then a Microsoft login page and stealing credentials. So really easy to pull off. You can probably copy 99% of the code for a page like this from a prior email that you received and the attacker will get a couple of passwords probably, which is sufficient to make the attack worthwhile, given how easy it is to pull off. And Palo Alto Networks has a blog post describing an interesting attack against GitHub Actions. The problem here is how GitHub deals with action pins. An action is pinned if only a very specific version of the action is being executed, meaning a cryptographic hash is first verified that only this particular version of the action is being used. If later a malicious actor would update the action while well, uh, that version would not get executed. The problem, however, is that there are a couple different ways and Palo Alto goes over the different methods that can be used here, how one action may include another action. And of course, you don't need to change the action itself if one of those dependencies can be altered and with that malicious code could later be inserted into the action. Interesting concept, not really sure how to fix this, but of course, this is one of the big problems that people are struggling with when they're dealing with supply chain security, trying to work out all of these dependencies of dependencies. And last uh, few days, I've seen a number of references to work done by Rapid7 regarding attacks against the Cisco SSL uh, VPNs. The common issue here is, well, that these VPNs don't have multi-factor authentication enabled. So uh, this really comes down to a good old brute force attack, maybe some credential stuffing, but uh, nothing really fundamentally new here, no new vulnerability. It's just not having multi-factor authentication implemented, which should be pretty obvious, a must by now for uh, VPNs and uh, similar sort of remote access uh, networks. Victims have then been reported to be attacked by ransomware after the initial access was made via the VPN. Interesting that there are only sort of two IP addresses apparently that are originating a lot of this traffic. We don't have any reports for these IP addresses in our database, which may indicate that they're sort of working off a more targeted list of known Cisco devices. And sticking with Cisco here for another story, the uh, Cisco Talus research team has an interesting blog post with uh, some misconfigurations for some top level domains, in particular with a feature that is called control interruption. The problem this feature tries uh, to address is that if you are using a top level domain, internally, like you for your company decided, hey, internally, we're using sort of a dot company domain. Later, I can then issues that top level domain as a new generic top level domain and to essentially give companies then a chance uh, to uh, notice that this top level domain is now used in uh, in the public. Well, a uh, the trick here that I can propose and basically implement as a matter of policy is to set up a specific domain, your DNS needs immediate attention, dot, and then the top level domain, like dot com and such. 
And the A record, the IPv4 address for this entry should then be 127.0.53.53 to not point to anything external. But uh, what apparently has happened, uh, for example, with the .kits top level domain is that they did actually not restrict or prevent someone from registering uh, this very specific domain name cisco grabbed it and just to see what happened and of course emily received uh, various email messages and other messages uh, like uh, for example uh, connections from windows systems and such to uh, the host names that they set up they also found a couple of country level domains uh, with uh, similar issues that are basically just not uh, configured uh, quite correctly Well, that's it for today. If you have any suggestions about the podcast, any things that I missed or so, well, please let me know. As mentioned before, there will be no podcast on Monday because of Labor Day. I will, however, be giving my talk in London. So if you are in London, I'll try not to forget to add a link to the registration page to the show notes. So you will have to pre-register so we can make sure that there is enough space and such for everybody who wants to attend. But the event itself is free. Thanks for listening and talk to you again on Tuesday. Bye.